I waited patiently for the Lord He inclined and heard my cry He brought me up out of the pit Out of the mud clay And I will sing Sing a new song I will sing Sing a new song They said, you know, Ty's, Ty's never been the same since he lost his mom, which was three years ago, May. So she died May of 2002. You know, when you lose someone who's great, they just, the loss is intensified. So losing mom was, um, you know, pretty devastating. And, you know, it's interesting, I, when I preached here, I was at the back of the church greeting people, and I just had this little thought go through my heart. You know, you know, it would have been really great you know, to have my mom be here. And um, this lady walked by me, Don Hughes. No, it wasn't Don, it was um, Laura. And she used to cut my mom's hair. <laughs> my mom got her hair done every week. <laughs> she could afford it. And um, and I know Laura really had a heart for my mom. It's Don Hughes' sister, Laura. And she walked by me and I just thought, you know, mom really liked, really liked Laura. And um, I know my mom, or Laura really liked my mom. And so I'm, I'm getting toward the end of the, you know, the, the greeting. And uh, Laura showed back up. She said, um, she said, I got in my car, and I just felt like the Lord said to me, you know, go back and tell Ty, you know, his mom would have been proud. And, um, you know, that was, that was so sweet of the Lord. I mean, just <laughs> amazing. And you know what I think, what I've found with the Hope Center is, it's, it's, it's like I got revelation the other day. It's like, think of three streams. There's the stream of, people in an inner city context or a context of hopelessness, it's many were conceived in that. I mean, that when they were, the moment they got conceived in the womb, um, it, was, it was a womb of hopelessness. And, and all they've known, you know, whether they're in the projects or whatever, it's, they've known hopelessness. So there's almost like this grace of familiarity our school gets out at 3.30 and doesn't open until 4 o'clock, so we want to have a spot in line so we could get in there before everyone else. Then there's a stream of people that feel called of the Lord to be a, 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 you know, a blessing, an expression of hope to those in hopelessness. But then there's this third stream, which I feel like the Lord has asked, invited me into, and it's like an, the stream is an invitation to His suffering. And um, and it's 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 like I carry that all the time, and you know I live on 108th and Center. I live in an unbelievable house. I have an unbelievable marriage and family, but it's like in my heart there's this forever abiding reality of suffering that I feel. I feel the Lord's heart of the suffering. I feel His suffering. I feel the first dream conceived in hopelessness suffering. I, I carry that with me all the time. And it's interesting, in the midst of the suffering, um, the level of intimacy with the Lord is, yeah, it's just, I've been, as I've been, you know, speaking lately, it's like, it's like the finest of wine, which is, a, I think, a neat, you know, what the breaking it takes to get the wine. It's just, uh, and you know, the older the wine, it's just like the longer, we're doing this thing. It's um, you know the intimacy I'm, I experience with the Lord is uh, it's just awesome. I mean, it's incredible. It's incredible. I wouldn't trade it. So sometimes I think, gosh, had the had the the experience of suffering not been something He invited me into, I think, gosh, the the intimacy I would have missed out on potentially. That's. I shudder to think of the loss of intimacy more than not having to be in the, you know, the, the fellowship of his sufferings.